G'day, fellas, and welcome to game number five of Outback Octagon 2's Grand Final. We are here. We finally made it. We made it. The last game of Outback Octagon to ever grace your screens for this year live. Uh, you can always go back and watch the mod, in which case it won't be the last game. But anyway, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here. Let's talk a little bit about what we've got for you today because, well, I'm I'm getting excited. In the north of the map, playing in the color red as the Marlians, we've got Wham01 to his south across the river in the color yellow, playing as the French. Beastie Cutie to his south, playing in the color orange as the Delhi Sultanate. Don Ardy. Across the river once again in the east. Playing as the Mongols. It's Salami. And to his east, a little bit higher up in the color blue. Playing as the Ottomans once again. It is Anatan. To their south, on the same side of the river, in the color teal. Playing as the Rus, his painted to favorite sieve. The number one Civ, I guess you could say the number 80 Civ as well. It is Marine Lord. And to his direct west, playing as the Ottomans in the color pink. Puppy boar. Last but not least, hiding away where nobody sees. In the color purple, playing as the French. It's Urk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here on Mega Random. We started it off on Mega Random. We finish it off on Mega Random. Of course, Outback Octagon. Back in the day, season one, it was only Mega Random back then. Since then, we've moved it up a little bit, gone in and got some custom maps done. Gives us a little bit more consistency, predictability. You start seeing these crazy strategies like we saw from Salami yesterday. But now, all of a sudden, with Mega Random coming in, What's it going to be? How's it going to go? Who knows? These are the questions that we need to get answers to. And that is what we're going to be looking to see. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want to get this game or if you don't want to get the previous four games spoiled, if you're only tuning in for the first time here uh, and watching Octagon, and if you would like to see those first four games, I would encourage you to go back and check them now because I'm about to spoil the results of the four games before it because it is incredibly important that you know where these players are up to on their points. Let's take a look. Three, two, one. Here we go. Your point leader is Puppy Paw on 16 points. Anatan, second place, 13 points. Third place, Don Arty, 10 points. Marine Lord, fourth place, 9 points. And then in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, we have Wham01, Beastie Cutie, Urk, and Salami. Now you might be looking at that and thinking, damn. My favorite player. They've only got one point or two points or three points. Ah, man, that's terrible. Well, remember, this right here, this is the last chance. This is the last straw. We have seen some massive numbers coming out from players in the last two rounds. 13 points from Anatan in round four. 13 points from Puppy Paw in round three. Do we see another 13-point game? It's unlikely, but I mean... You got to look at the history, right? So far, 50% of the games that we've seen have had a player scoring 13 points. So it's definitely possible. And if you, I mean, hypothetically, if you were to look at, say, Urk, Salami, and say, add 13 points to them, well, that's going to put them in a pretty good spot. They might not be victorious. They might not knock Puppy Paw off the top. Is it, is it Puppy Paw who's on the top? It's Puppy Paw who's on the top. 16 points. Seems incredibly far away from anybody else. But, yes, it is... Uh, it's unlikely that you get knocked off the uh, the top there uh, as Puppy Poor if you're coming down from the bottom. But, I mean, someone else can always pip him off the top as well. So don't expect that he is going to be our victor. Could always be Anatan who has another brilliant game. Could be somebody like uh, like Don Hardy who has another brilliant game. He's in a wonderful position here. But that is how it's going to unfold. Now, remember, the previous champion of Outback Octagon was Puppy Poor. There is a potential that we see a two-time FFA champion of the world... There is potential. We'll keep an eye out for it. And I guess we'll move into the early game because it is starting to unfold, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk a little bit about who's got the best spawn here. Now, I think best spawn is obviously very subjective, but if you're going to go for most isolated spawn, you'd have to say, well, that's going to be Urk. But 
he's playing the French. Now he's got access to knights, and it's going to take him maybe 90 seconds to run across one corner to the map to the other. So maybe this is actually a really good spot for him. Maybe we see Urk go absolutely batshit today. That could be that could be a possibility. But maybe we don't. Maybe his spawn is, uh, you know, maybe there's not enough resources down here. I mean, he's got a big gold. He's got a small gold. He's got he's got deer, and he's got plenty of bunti. Uh, I mean, fish. Um, there are... There are a lot of things down here, but uh, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. The other other potential spawn that's quite good is Puppy Paws. A little bit further away, and it means that someone like Don Artie or Beastie, if they're fighting it out against each other, well, someone could come in and swoop and take out those kills. So, let's see exactly how it plays out, but I expect it to be an absolute bloodbath. And just remember that it doesn't always come down to the victory. It comes down to the points that you get along the way. Now, in the, in the last couple of games, we've seen Anatan and Puppy Paw collect a huge amount of points. And that's mainly been because they have gone for victory conditions when there have been a huge amount of players on the field. We saw Puppy Paw managing to pull it off. Anatan as well with the wonder. Do we see it today? Marine Lord, going to be the first one up to the Feudal Age. Goes up with the Golden Gate. Avoids going into the Kremlin. He's got a great spawn here, actually. Oh my god, I, I just realized he's got an incredible spawn. 54 gold a minute hunting cabin. Just casual Rus things. Don Arty now going to be reaching the feudal age. Going up with the Dome of the Faith. We'll be riding on board with him a little bit to see how he looks to play it. Sacred sites on this map. One central sacred site. Oh my god. A second sacred site in, in the base of Urk. Jeez. Feels bad, man. And the third sacred site uh, over here inside the base of Salami. Doesn't feel good to be a deli enjoyer this game. Sorry, Don. Now, we've seen Don Artie on the deli many a time before, and he is incredible when it comes to the deli. Really, it feels like a civilization that he has just got... Where are you pointing to? What's over here, Wham? What are we, what are we looking for? Making a little bit of an arrow over here? All right. I like it. You're, you're a big fan of the wood, hey? We'll have to see how it plays out for him. So, yeah, we, we've seen Don Artie do it many a time before. Even in Outback Octagon 1, I remember watching games with Don going absolutely crazy. But School of Cavalry now going to be coming down for Beastie. A little bit later than Don. Look at this. Don's got quite the lead on him. And this central sacred site leads me to believe that Don should have a pretty uncontested guaranteed sacred site, which he could use to leverage to either play it in Feudal or go Castle. We know Don loves the Castle Age. But now Urk are going to be aging up behind this. We see quickly School of Cavalry and Puppy Paw as well throwing down this Salt Nani trade network. So avoiding going into that Twin Minaret Madressa. Let's check in on the other side of the map where we do see Anatan also going for the Salt Nani trade network. The meta is shifting in FFA games, ladies and gentlemen. Let it be known. This is the final game and we are seeing double Salt Nani trade networks coming out from our Ottoman players today. All right. Well, towards the top side of the map. Wham now going to be throwing down the Mansa Quarry a little bit late on that one. Won't be the last player to age up. Salami, he's going to be up now as well. Looking for that uh, that Yam network through the deer stones. And there's Anatan. Now reach... Where is Anatan? If I had to bet, I'd say he's right here. There's Anatan now reaching the feudal age. So it looks like the last player to be up is going to be Wham here. Beastie a little bit... A little bit close. For comfort. There we go. So the age ups are through. Don's got a big lead when it comes to things like Sanctity. You can see Sanctity already through. It takes 2 minutes and 20 seconds. 2 minutes and 26 seconds to research. He's probably got about 10 seconds left. No, I'll take it back. 20 seconds left. Does he look to try and take this sacred site? We don't see anything really out there. He hasn't... He, he, well, we did see a scholar. But the scholar's just from the Dome of the Faith. And I love the fact he's going Dome of the Faith here. This is wonderful. I love watching Delhi players Dome of the Faith. I just feel like it's such a, such a great play uh, for the Delhi. Look at this beastie with a worker out in the middle of the map. Obviously on the French here. Civilization he's very talented with. Looking to now Don Artie just doing some magic out here early on in this game. Forcing out Beastie off the fishing boats. You hate to see it for Beastie. You hate to see it. He needs a good game right now. He needs a really solid game. And this is not the type of opening that you want. Not against double outposts like this. And he's trying to work down those fishing boats. And you can see the villagers probably going to garrison inside. He should be able to one shot, maybe two shot them. Beastie was sending down that villager to try and find a dock down further on the, on the river. Beastie finds it. A kill though. Nice and early on. Manages to secure up the villager kill. We'll check in with Anatan over on that right-hand side, and he's just doing what he does best. Camping it up nice and quietly. We're heading towards the castle edge. South side, second town center for Urk. Going to be coming in. Could be looking for a third one. We've seen him do it time and time again. Going for that big play. And the TC on the stone definitely indicates that that is the plan. That is the intention. Now down towards this bottom side. Looks like we've got even more units moving down here. Knight 
Gonna be on the way shortly. Keep in mind, Puppy Paw is down here. Beastie. Well, I don't want to. I, I don't want to tell you exactly how sharp his axe is, or whether he's got an axe that needs to be ground or grinded. I don't know what the past tense of grind is, but I can tell you now. Oh, that poor knight. Oh no! Now he's gonna miss the charge, right? Oh, he loses the charge. The scout blocked the charge. You hate to see it. Spearman actually comes out here, uh, but uh, let's just put it this way. I suspect Beastie might be going after Puppy Paw this game, if he has his way. He'll probably... Oh, he's got Wham in the north. He, he's got he, he's got double brother problems over on that top side. Now it looks like Don will be coming out towards Central Sacred Site. Meanwhile, Marine Lord just doing doing Rus things, picking up some deer, heading on back to his base. He also reaches the Castle Age and goes for the Abbey of Trinity. Weird decision. A high trade house here is literally like 400 gold. But for a guy with only 80 bunty, I guess it probably is... Maybe rocking 120, 130? Oh, seriously, Marine Lord? What's wrong with you? Oh, I can't look at you, Marine Lord. Get out of my base. Get out of my face. Castle Age coming through now. It's going to be the Mehmed Imperial Armory. Let's ride back on board with Beastie as he is getting tower rushed by Don. Oh, he's losing vills on the gold. That's one vill off. That's two vills off. No, don't do it like this, Beastie. No, no. He's throwing in the towel. You can't be throwing in the towel like this. Oh, he manages. He realizes three villagers get pulled back. He's fighting until the end. He's got to do it. Sacred site captured for Don. Marine Lord. Uh, apparently, this uh, I'm getting word in from somebody who is spectating Marine Lord. Marine Lord's got his stream live at the moment. Marine Lord has 735 bunty. That is a lot. All right. Well, it looks like Beastie now trying to cause some pain on the south side here. Has managed to rebuild the dock. Keep in mind, Beastie needs a big game this today. Let's just take a look at the scoreboard quickly once again. Two points at the moment for Beastie. Needs to pull off some magic here. It was a late age up from him. Don got the age up. Gets the sacred site. He's holding a pretty solid position. And a tan now hitting Castle Age as well. Going to be the MIA going down for him. Towards that north side, the Farimba Garrison's come through for Wham. He could look to apply some pressure. We see the Donzos coming out. Now on that south side. Puppy Paw. Going to be working in that army. Could be looking to push Urk as well. Beastie just chilling out. Got the little star formation of knights and scouts. Underneath the trees. The new age begins for Salami. Who goes up with the step right out. Beautiful spot. He's got the double gold here. You love to see it. Especially right underneath the town center. Khan now going to be working his magic. We've got a lot of Castle Ages coming through. And already the relics are getting picked up by Marine Lord. He's up to one relic. That'll be the second one on the way back. Third one. Not yet through just yet, but he's looking for it. Plenty of relics in the middle of the map. Tower Rush has been relatively successful here for Don. He shut down the gold, but Beastie's moved on to greener pastures. Well, I guess you could say golder pastures. And now looking to try and harass Puppy Poor in the south, Beastie. Not just picking a fight close to home. He is really intent on ruining Puppy Paw's game. Keep in mind, Puppy Paw is the point leader at the moment. 16 points in the bag for Puppy Paw. Wants to avoid being overtaken by anybody else. Continues applying pressure. Really trying to ruin his day right now. I think it might be a classic case of, well, my day's ruined, but I think I can ruin yours as well. Cleans up these villagers over on the stone mine. Manganel down here. Neutralized on the sacred site. Khan going to be able to do it. Beastie really... I mean, if you didn't watch game four, you probably don't understand exactly why Beastie's doing this, but I understand completely why Beastie's doing this. He's got a neighbor immediately next to him. He's got a second neighbor to the top side, and he's just like, no, mm -mm, no, nah, nah, my, 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 my axe is down here, and my sword, and my bow. It's a, it's a classic Lord of the Rings reference. It's it's more of a Lord of the Rings meme reference. But Don Artie going to be looking to put on the pressure. Don Artie, of course, not going to be playing around here early on. Keep in mind, Don Artie's still in the Feudal Age. This is a guy who said you can't play Feudal Age. He's literally playing the Feudal Age. I can't believe it. I hate to see it. Don Artie, don't do me like this, but look on the north side. So many units up here. We've got... It's just a whole bunch of Donzos. He, he's got like 25 Donzos in those... In those... Uh, in those ships. Now Beastie going to be coming. Oh my god, the surround is happening for Beastie. Poor Beastie. I feel terrible for him. It's a really unfortunate spawn for him. In the middle of everybody. Urk now reaching the castle age as well. He's going to be going for the guild hall. 
Tell you what, Urk's looking good. Increasingly good. Manages to get some decent charges in. Gets that extra bit of attack damage. As opposed to attack speed for all you MMO players out there. So attack, no, attack speed, attack damage. That's more Dota, isn't it? Is it Dota? Does Dota have attack speed? I know League of Legends has got haste now. And the game I used to play, Hon. Oh my god. Do you guys remember Hon? Wasn't Hon just the best game? Heroes of New Earth? I, I must have spent... Uh, I reckon I must have spent like 6,000 hours playing Hon. Dude, that was so much fun. All right, well, Beastie under pressure. A lot of pressure right now. Uh, the question is going to be whether Don realizes in time and says, hey, that, that's my kill. Get away from it. Uh, Beastie moving in with the Knights. Up against full Donzo here. Really smart move by Wham to be going into just only Donzos. No archers whatsoever here. The on only archers are going to be from the town center. And you can see that... W where is Beastie going? Beastie now moving around the back of the base. King comes out. King comes out. King out of water. Beastie trying to keep the king alive a little bit longer. He's moving the king away. Trying to keep it alive. Has he got anything? He's got villages over towards the west. He could possibly look at throwing down an outpost, maybe a couple of walls around it. Keep in mind, no stone walls until the castle age. Town center is almost certainly dead. Knights looking to protect. They protect. They attack. But most importantly, they attract. How many memes are we going to reference in this game? This game is really becoming a meme game. I just realized, where's my... Did I turn off the music when I wasn't looking? Or is there just no music? You never know. Outpost is going to get thrown down, but... I can't help but feel like this is close towards Puppy Paw's base. Wham, looking to loop around. We'll make a connection with the king. Loses a little bit of health, but he's okay. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of units. That is a lot of units. Wham, pushing down. King going to be jumping out. He knows that he can't be fighting with... Oh, the Donzos! Oh, big shot from the Donzos. 83 health. And now trying his best to push through. Manages to break it. Horsemen come around the back. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> he runs away and Donard, he gets the kill! Oh, that could have been terrible for Beastie. The one player's day he was trying to ruin. Puppy Paws almost came through and picked up the kill there. Beastie, the first one to tap out in this... Oh my god, I got really scared right there. The, 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 the Khan has been killed as well as Urk reaching the Imperial Age. We're going to change from the perspective of uh, Salami so we don't have to hear that sound anymore. Oh my lord. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, Don Artie now picks up three points. With Don Artie picking up three points, that is going to take him to 13 points and put him in a position to challenge first place. Meanwhile, inside the base of Salami, the Genissary timing push. He's got nine Genissaries out. He's continuing to pump Salami under pressure. Look at the night mass as well. He's not going to be able to escape this. There's no way it happens. I mean, he can pop the town center and maybe get the king out, pop the movement speed. Has he got the resources in the bank? We check. He's only on 43. 43 food. He needs 400 food to pop it. At the same time, towards that, that western corner, we now start to see Wham and Puppy Paw looking to enclose upon the nearest enemy. And there's the king now onto the ground. He doesn't have the extra movement speed. He's trying his best to get out. He's trying to get... Uh, there he goes. He pops it. He's managed to find it. 2.05 movement speed. Yam Network going to be helping him escape from all the cavalry. Oh, my lord. That is one fast king. Has he got a transport ship somewhere? He's building the dock. He's building the dock. Don Artie under pressure, though. Don's king will be challenged here. He could look to move to a transport ship as well. Let's see if he gets it out. Doesn't actually have the dock up for the moment. Don trying to survive. He's caught a rock between a hard place. Grand galley from Puppy Paw. Are you serious? What age is this? And Puppy Paw coming in, bringing in all the knights. It looks like the surround's going to happen, but he's not going to be able to meet it. Tries his best, and does he get the connection? He's going for it, and oh, it's Puppy Paw that takes out Salami. He chased him across the map, and Anatan going to miss the kill by the blink of an eye. Puppy Paul pushes his lead further on in this game. Two down, six more to go. King still under pressure here from Don. Wham, looking to go ham. And you got to worry about the south corner. We talked about it earlier. The fact that, the, the fact that we've got Urk down here, and he is sitting happily. Booming away three TCs. What does it matter? What does it matter if everybody's dead by the time you come online? There's a there's a part of me that thinks you you got to be in the thick of it. And maybe Puppy Paw he, he he seemed to draw a pretty good straw over here. Now coming through into the base, actually wards off all of the Donzos for now. But there's going to be so many knights that's around, and you can see the amount of units. Don gonna gonna try and clean up the siege. Donzos coming through. Wham! Looking to try and pick up a few extra points. 
The king, the king, he's stuck. He's out, he's about. He's trying to get a fish out of water. He's got nowhere to go. He's completely surrounded. It's going to be the knights that get the kill unless the Donzos can snipe it. Bobby Paul kills Don Artie as well. He takes him out in a quick succession of kills almost immediately. Meanwhile, inside the base of Anatan, there is just absolute chaos all over this map. Marine Lord now looking to take out Anatan. Where's the king? He's inside the town center. He's throwing down archery rangers. He needs to keep right now. On the south side, it looks like the scout goes down. He forces it back though. He manages somehow. Marine Lord doesn't commit to it. Probably the right decision. There's a lot of military here right now. Big amount of army coming through. All right, let's check in. Grand Galley somehow still alive. Look at this Grand Galley. I don't think we've ever seen Grand Galleys used until the Octagon. So keep in mind, at the end of this game, we will, we will be doing the points live. So for everybody on YouTube, you will know who is the winner, who is second place, who is third place. In fact, we could probably even start awarding... Um, uh, oh, chat's a bit off. There we go. Thank you. I fixed it up. Thank you very much. Uh, very much. I didn't see your name, uh, but I do. I do see your do see your lovely face. Let me, let me see. Let me call you out. Oh, that's a hard name to say. Par C J. Par C J. Thank you. Thank you, Par C J. All right, Urk's coming out on the map. He's finally online. He's got the elite knights. The numbers aren't the best, honestly. If I'm Urk, I don't know why, but he, he, I feel like going three TCs, feudal knights is just such a good play as France in free for alls. 3 TCs guarantees you scale into the late game. And just feudal knights. Stay feudal age. Look to get the extra points from being in feudal. And just look for king kills. Just and go up to like 60 knights, 70 knights. Knights get cleaned up. Uh, so if we do a quick... I mean, we, we can do a, a quick count off the top. So three points go to Don Adi. He managed to pick up the kill on Beastie. Two points go to Puppy Paw so far. He's killed Salami and he's killed Don. So we know that much so far. So three and two. Which means that our point leaders are just going to get further ahead. If we take a look at the scoreboard. So that means Puppy Paw is up to 18 points now. Don Arty on 13. He's tying with Anatan. So they're going to tie for second place, at least at the moment. Now remember, there is a tiebreaker as well. Uh, if, if players do finish on the same amount of points... Uh, we do have tiebreakers in place for that. That includes things like wonder victories, sacred victories uh, as a way to break that apart. Uh, and then it continues going down and co going down. It actually goes down pretty far. It goes like wonder victories then sacred victories, then just vi general victories. Uh, and then the, the tiebreaker after that, I think, is player kills. And then after player kills, it's landmark kills. And then after landmark kills, it's uh, deer kills for Marine Lord. Just for Marine Lord. All right. Well, on the south side, Urk continues building up. But if there's a threat in this game, it's Puppy Paw. He's managed somehow to sneak out two kills, managing to, to do a really good job with that. So he's going to be hitting that maximum population of 300. The only other player who got a kill, Don Artie, is dead. That's going to put him in an awkward spot here. Let's take a look over towards that north side. As Wham... Looks to start walling up. He's got a huge amount of pit mines building up now. Triple pit mine threat. Actually, where is the third pit mine? We see one, two. There's got to be a third pit mine somewhere. There it is. No, that's not a pit mine. No, that is a pit mine. Oh, it's just got berries stuck around it. Why would you even make a pit mine there? I mean, I guess, right? Like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but I feel like this one landed in the court next door. All right, over on the east side. Marine Lord under pressure. Night numbers are building. Let's do a king check. Can I get a king check on aisle three? It's going towards the Spaskaya Tower. Uh, see, that, that, that it's, it's quite awkward, actually. The king needs to be on the other side of the wall. Like I'm locked out of heaven. Is that, is that are, those, are those the words? Locked out of heaven? I feel like that's the words. Marine Lord. We, we've been through this, Marine Lord. The, the king goes inside the walls. He doesn't go outside the walls. Man, is, is that the play, though? Could be. Elite Knights now coming through for Marine Lord. He's up to 40. Let's take a look on the top side. Looks like Puppy Poor and Wham. 
They might have their disagreements. But this, this also may be one of them. Puppy Paul looking to push through. He's got Urk down to the south, honestly. I mean, Puppy Paul could probably go up to Urk. Urk fighting up against the Marine Lord, though. Cannon firing off. Springlord's going to be able to find connections. They've yet to get their roller shutter trigger upgrades, but it looks like Marine Lord holds for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, in all of this, trade is now underway. I didn't even realize, where is the neutral trading post? Or is he trading to a market? Is he? Ha. Oh, 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 I didn't even realize. The, the, the salami's market right here. I didn't even realize. It, it, it's, it's so well hidden. I didn't even realize. All right. And speaking of markets, we got another one coming up. It's Don Artie's market. So now Puppy Paul going to be leveraging that. Now remember, you can't trade with somebody if they're alive. So as an example, Anatand couldn't trade with Wham. But he can trade with a person if they're dead. And so here we can see there are dead markets. So you're allowed to trade with dead markets. This was the market of a man once gone. Salami. Unfortunately, he has gone the way of the dodo. But his market remains. And with it, the success that it once provided. Town Center just going to be burning forever. Puppy Paul continuing to build up units. He's up to 222 population at the moment. Keep in mind, he's got a max of 300. Can I just shout out my wife right now? She brought me a coffee. She she woke up because she's going to work. Uh, it is 6.30 in the morning. And she just woke up and she's like, do you want a coffee? And I'm like, hell yeah, I want a coffee. And she just brought it to me and it is absolutely amazing. So thank you, wifey. All right, Urk, now heading towards that west side. Has he just realized that he can't really go after Marine Lord? I think that might be the case. I mean, realistically, like, okay, let's do king checks. Where is the king check? Where, where is the king for Anatand? It's, it's got to be... Where, where is the king for Anatand? Hold on. Okay, it's in the keep. This, this feels really easy to hit. This one, not so much. Stone walls. King for Wham in the town center. Over on the west side, Puppy Paw. King inside the town center. And King for Urk in the town center. Oh, that, that's dangerous, man. That is so dangerous. What if you just dropped a whole bunch of units across here? It would be hard to do unnoticed, but you could totally do it. Numbers starting to build now for Marine Lord, though. He's out and about in the middle of the map, though. We got ourselves a bit of a battle beginning to unfold. If he he needs to take out the neutral, the, the neutral market. If he takes it out, then he can't trade. I don't think he's realized. Still sits on 760 health. The, the threat here is not these markets. Okay, oh, now he realizes. He hits the market. So without, with the market being taken, trade is completely neutralized here. He, he can't trade at all now. So the traders will just be useless. So Urk manages to force a little bit of pain upon Anatand. Marine Lord cleans up a couple of villages outside the base of Urk. And now Double Keep going to be thrown down for our French player. Keep in mind, he's got plenty of stone accessible here. He does have the Guild Hall. Knight's going to be running back, getting caught out of position. Big charges. No biology coming through yet for Marine Lord. A little bit of a, an oversight. Compare that to the French Royal Knights, which are up at 364 health. University. Wait. Is he researching? No, no. Bi biology just came in for him. It literally just came in. He's up to 360 health now. He went from 300 to 360 health just from that upgrade. That's a good upgrade. Now, what did, what did I want to look at in Marine Lord's base? I wanted to look at something. I can't remember what it was. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. Oh, no. It wasn't Marine Lord's base. It was the Guild Hall. Okay, so it looks like he took out stone and he's put it back over to gold, I would assume. I don't know, but he's sitting on 2.6k stone, which feels like a lot of stone. But an interesting decision not to go into more stone. I feel like you, you've got such a superpower as France to go for max stone. But I guess he's not looking for it. Puppy Paw approaching maximum 
velocity, maximum escape velocity from this game. 270 population at the moment. I don't know how he somehow manages to always position himself perfectly in these games. It's very good at, at, at consistently doing it. Urk now going to be denied the keep. Puppy Paul with villagers out here as well. He's got the walls up so far, so could look to try and get through. The center of the map. Great bombard from Anatan. Going to be breaking down these central walls. Keep in mind, you can trade to the dock here. Maybe that's what he's looking to do. It could be that Anatan is looking to trade towards the dock. Anatan. Oh, you know what? I mean, why would you even trade towards the dock? Just take the trade post. It's right in the middle of the map. Where are the other trade posts? We've got one here. Is that it? Is it just a single trade post? It's a bit... Oh, no, there's the second one down here, a little bit further on. Definitely makes sense to, to kind of free up this position. Prevent Puppy from having all of this space. You don't want Puppy to have all this space. Knight's now going to be coming out. Looks like the Sapai will be able to block on the front. Genesaries on the back going to rip them apart. They make the right decision and just head back towards base. Anatan's number's looking good. Demo ship. Lying in wait. Lying in wait. Demo ship from Puppy. Oh, it's going to be disgusting. Blow it. Why didn't he blow it sooner? All the infantry got out. Nothing happened. Rest in peace, little demo. And now he crosses. Huge army. It's Ottoman v Ottoman in the middle of the map. I don't know what Puppy Paw did, but Enetan fighting on behalf of Beastie, perhaps. Beastie's paid him off. He said, hey, take out Puppy. Get rid of him. Maybe it's Enetan looking to try and get in on that first place. And, oh, you know what? It's probably that. It could be Anatan saying, I want to get first place, and the only way I'm going to do that is to take you out. It could be the case. But look at the population difference between the two. 50 more villagers for Puppy Paw. He's able to clean him up here. So many Genissaries in the choke point. Mangadels, though. Watch out. They're always looming and looking for a shot. Down on that south side, we got night v night action. Streltsy looking to back away from the fight. A little bit of movement coming in. It's going to cancel their double time. But they do manage to hold. Does a decent job here for Marine Lord. Really struggling with gold though. He's got six relics. You can see how... Or why he justified going for those relics early on. Keep in mind, everybody is on 200 pop except for Puppy. Puppy's on 300. So he is a significant threat. Trading as well. 62 gold. Not the biggest trades. But it's not bad. It's honest work. Now towards that top side. Just a little bit of a cleanup coming through on Anatan's stone walls. He did go for some big stone walls. They were bold. A little bit too big though. Count center still on fire in the middle of the map. Now it looks like Urk going to be pushing out, grabbing some gold. You can see why he switched over the guild hall from stone over to gold. He's struggling with gold. He's got plenty of it on the map. The problem is, is he able to guard the villagers that are gathering it? I'm curious what upgrades he's picked up. It looks like he's actually picked up every single upgrade for his mining, which is very interesting to see. Arrow, so it's now going to be working down these villagers. He pulls them back. And we'll check in in the center of the map once again. There are some people who are biding their time right now. In particular, I'm looking at Wham. He's just hanging out. He's having a good time. Market's coming up as well. There's that neutral market. Where he could be looking to trade with. Don's one. Puppy Paw is here as well. Now the number's going to build. Arbolatria number's starting to, to really build here. Keep in mind they got the Pavis shield. They can always deploy. They don't get the extra range just yet. That's on the pop. You're going to have to wait for the pop for that one. Only get the extra armor. Streltsy going to be coming out. Single Mangonel. Going to be taken out by the Springles in the back. Surely Roller Shutter triggers this through. Indeed it is. Manages to get the Mango out. A little bit of a counterattack on the backside. Didn't see exactly what it was. Mango obliterated in the blink of an eye. Second Mangonel is now coming up. He's looking to try and pick off this Arbolatria mass. Big shots into the mass. Huge shots. Damage on every single one. And it looks like all those Arbolatria are going to be going down here. Meanwhile, towards the center of the map. Wham! Getting involved. 
He says, you want to pick a fight? Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's fight. A little bit of a three-way here. I, I can't help but feel like these villages are one demo ship away from destruction, but they're fortunately just on the right side of the gold vein. Stonewall opened up now. I didn't see what it was. I don't hear it. I don't think he deleted the wall either. Villagers were under pressure. Anatant. Holding that center. This late game becomes so pivotal for all these players. Anatan needs to score at least one point to push him ahead of Donati. Ablatrian on the backside. Looking to defend against the horseman. Should be able to find the, the Manganel and do. Springles were coming out to secure it anyway. And now Marine Lord looking to really push down upon Urk. Marine Lord's got plenty of resources in the bank and a huge army as well to support it. Mango shot's decent. Springles are uncontested in this situation. A little bit of extra health on the mangoes though. I'll see if we can get clarification on who is winning in the tiebreak between Anatand and Don Adi uh, from the admin during this game. We'll have to see. If I remember, there's a specific hierarchy. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but not 100%. I think it's Wonder Victory and then Sacred Victory. But I'll have to double check. All right. Looks like Marine Lord's going to push through. Hold on. I I'll double check right now, actually. All right. Just seeking clarification now from our admin. He asked me the question, are we counting all games or just the finals? Probably something that we didn't put in the handbook, but it is all games that are going to be counted for the tiebreak. Anatan just, or Wham rather, just chilling out. Anatan continuing to, to take more and more space, more and more resources. Marine Lord's numbers are still looking really solid here. Meanwhile, I mean, pa Puppy Paul's just been chilling out. L look at the resources for Puppy. I think he might be going for a wonder. Y you'd have to suspect he's going for a wonder. Looking to exhaust all this gold away. He's going to have to go across the ocean if he wants any more, but I guess, realistically, he's got trade. It's only 62 gold, but it's not bad. I mean, it's Ottoman trade as well. you got to remember, Ottoman trade's pretty good. He's got that extra movement speed, like the Yam Network, and also got extra gold if he goes for trade bags. It, it's actually one of the highest um, gold incomes in the game when it comes to trade uh, for the Ottomans. The, the only higher uh income that you can get are the malians but that's with food as well and you've got infinite food so i mean to be honest i'd probably prefer uh ottomans if i'm honest all right gold being exhausted slowly all these resources falling off the map bit of a stalemate at this point everybody maxed out except for urk urk sitting on 177 pop interestingly with 177 pop, he's got plenty of gold, but no food. It doesn't really seem like he's got a lot of space either. If we look at the base, oh my god, still got a relic in the back. Is he saving this for a wonder? I, I feel like he's saving this position for a wonder. He's going to need to pick up the relic if he wants to. 5.5k, uh, 5.5k wood, or rather gold. Looks like Urks moved the king. King safely in a keep now. Definitely the right choice considering his back is a little bit open. I mean, ideally, I'd love to even see him stonewall across this, uh, just so that there's no risk of people coming down it. Because I, I think technically you can still come down this river. Maybe even just palisades would be enough. Big mangoes behind the walls. Look at this, seven mangonels. Springle's going to be teeing off towards them, though. Now in the middle of the map. Looks like Puppy Paw going to be working down all those markets. He's trading to the trading post. So not going to be able to stop it. And 209 gold coming through. Puppy Paw definitely a little bit jealous of the trade of Enetand. You can tell by the difference in income as well. 3,600 gold a minute versus 2,100 gold a minute. He is big jealous over there. Mm. I wonder what Puppy Paw is planning on doing, guys. 
he's playing this game for anybody i don't know if you guys have, have played age of empires 3 i'm sure there's a lot of people that have some people probably haven't but if you've ever played a no rush game like no rush 40 this is literally no rush 40. i'm inspired all right we, we got ourselves a little bit of friendly mining on mining action over here something that you you've probably seen plenty of times before bombard's gonna be moving out he could look to end their lives if he so chose to i know i'd be doing it you gotta pull the trigger right there i guess he's got bigger fish to fry he's more worried about the uh, the trade coming out right now i'm looking at this right now with my fry face Hmm. Kind of sus. Kind of sus. Kind of sus. Oh. Hey, puppy, watch out, man. Watch out. Hey, hey, my bills, man. Hey, come on. Pu hey, puppy. He's like calling out across the house. He's like, hey, puppy, stop it. And now, he, now he's like, ah, oh, I, I, I found him. I found him. That's it. It's all over, Red Rover. Puppy, <laughs> puppy reluctantly killing the villagers of his brother. It, it was a very, like, non-committal. Like, oh, look, a single mangonel has gone wild. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a look at them at the mangonel mass that is slowly pushing out now from Urk. He's looking to pick a fight here with Anatan. Keep in mind, over towards that east side, We've still got Marine Lord. Nice little splits coming in. He's trying to make a break towards the backside. Should be able to find it. Doesn't make the connection. Big damage coming out from those cannons. Keep in mind, nothing on the great bombards, which are uh, quite great and, and uh, soon to be arriving. Looks like he's completely cleaned this out. 700 gold remaining on this one. Little bit of stone left as well. And it looks like Wham has been cleaned up. Trading with the dock here. Wham on 54 gold with his traders. I don't know exactly where they're trading to. It's the very corner. It makes perfect sense. So Enerten still holding the middle. Enerten doing a pretty good job of extending his base out into the middle here. Let's check in with Marine Lord. He's been very quiet over on the eastern... Ah, uh, oh, mm. Hello. How are you doing, sir? A few town centers going up for you. Don't mind if I do. Is he on 4 TC? He is too. 4 TCs over here. 117 vills. Not a huge economy. But, uh... You reckon you could fit a wonder there? I reckon you probably couldn't. Those, those spaces look deceivingly large. But they're not actually. Alright, up towards the top side though. We hear deletes coming through for Urk. Unsure exactly what he's deleting. Could be military. No, it's it's villagers by the look of it. He's up to 122. No, it's buildings. He's got to be deleting buildings. Yeah, there we go. He's throwing down stables around the Red Palace. One of the greatest defensive landmarks in the game. Also, coincidentally, one of the greatest offensive landmarks in the game. All right, towards that top side. Looks like Wham will get pushed by his brother here. Where are... I was about to ask, where, where is the wonder? I think that's probably the best spot you could go for it. There are alternatives, but that, that one seems the furthest away. It's nice and secluded. It's got the, the double protection on the sides. I think you're fine. Anatan. Oh my god, look at Anatan. Down to 20 villagers right now. He's deleting everything. Take it all, baby. And he's pushing somebody who is also... I mean, he's not really deleting Vil's Urk. But he's got a pretty big army. I wonder why they're not going after Marine Lord. They're very much focused on taking out each other from across the map. Let's check in now. Over towards that uh, that south side as Anatan continues to push down. Anatan just he, he knows he needs to make one point. That's the thing. He wants to get second place. He's tied with Don at the moment. I'm going to ask our admin once again if he can work out the numbers and tell us who has... who's got the tiebreak advantage over them. 
Bombard's gonna get caught out of position. They look to turn in upon all the units and they fire down on the siege. Reboldequins, Reboldequins, Reboldequins looking to fire off Randy. He gets sniped out. Second one on the back line. Gonna get sniped out as well. Still the great Bombard's coming in. Big damage. Anatan now sitting on 155 military pop. Ab absolutely eviscerates the army here of Urk. Urk now down to 35 military. Slowly working through. Up towards that top side. It looks like Wham has decided to pick a fight with his brother. I'm curious, what, what's the point situation for Wham? Let's double check. Wham currently sitting on three points. So going from three points to four points doesn't really change much. Let's see what Marine Lord does here. Where are the villagers? I'm watching for double walled in as well. No gate, by the way. Makes it a bit... You got to be careful with no gate. If you get caught out of position. All right, now pushing through. He wants that king. The king is going to separate him from Don Arty. Don Arty's already gone out in this game. He picked up three points early. That brought him up from 10 points to 13. And that's even Stevens with Enetand. Oh, Mangonels. Oh, the Mangonels. The Mangonels kill all of the Janissaries. Keep in mind, Enetan has got no tempo after this. If he... Oh, my God. He just lost in the blink of an eye. Oh. <laughs> uh, did, did he delete units? Um, uh, did he delete units? Wow. Now, for anybody wondering uh, at home... Why do we respect mangonels? Why do we respect mangonels? Anybody? Anyone? Oh, that's right, because they've got area of effect damage. Speaking of area of effect, looks like Marine Lord is looking to extend his area of effect over to the base of Anatan as that kill has come through. Anatan sits on nine villagers at the moment. Now, for anybody wondering about tiebreak advantage, Don Arty has the tiebreak advantage currently. He has two victories in the tournament by wonder victory. One in the third week and one victory with a wonder today. Anatan has one sacred site victory and one win by wonder. Therefore, Don Arty technically has the tie break victory. So if Anatan can't pick up a kill here, he needs to find a sneaky kill. Don Arty will have caught himself or get, gained himself second place in this game. Remember, this is the last game. They say that the, the rules are made up and the points don't matter. Well, that's the wrong game, my friend. The points do matter in this game. But we do we, we do make up the rules. Is, is, is that what they say? What is, what is... Whose line is it anyway? What do they say? They something... They, the score's made up and the rules don't matter? I think that's it. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's Drew Carey. It's the good old days. Whose line is it anyway? Colin Mockery. Oh, wh what an absolute legend of comedy those guys are. All right, well, Puppy Boar holding on. 274 population up against his brother Wham on 149. But Wham's got lots of resources in the bank. It's only going to be for trash though. 21k wood. All right, well, looks like Marine Lord. I, I don't know what he's done. Can, can we get a king check? King check in the middle. King in the Seagate Castle with 2,700 health. But there's a big army here. That's the one thing to note. 134 pop. If he can stay in the game, Anatan does still have a chance at getting that second place. <laughs> I like this. It's like, you come through here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Come through here. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I like the way you finished the wall as well. It's very much like, uh, yeah, I couldn't be bothered. You know, we, ha we had to delete. We had to delete the, uh, the, the lumber camps and I just didn't have the heart to do it. Demo ship coming through. He's on the back. Look at this. Wham, trying to find it. He's going to get picked off before he gets the chance. Big counterattack coming through, though. Hey, he's not going to find anything through here. Ladies and gentlemen, the king, he sits safely behind two rows of stone walls in the Spaskaya Tower. Meanwhile, meanwhile, in Marine Lord's base, he is just chilling out. He's having a good time. So, we're going to be looking to commit an attack over there. Enetan 
I mean, I, I would suspect people don't know that he has deleted Vils, right? Like, that's got to be the case. Because he's still sitting on 15 Vils. He's literally got nothing in the bank. He's, he's, he is making Vils, though. So he's like, he's realized his mistake, and he's like, oh, okay, uh, forgiveness. Marine Lord. Gonna defend the mango shots off. Towards those French knights, those French royal knights. Big Arbolatria numbers up here, honestly. 38 Arbolatria. We check in on that top side. Seagate Castle has been repaired. It's definitely a snipe attempt to be had. Oh my lord, look at the amount of siege that's back here. I de tell you what, these games definitely become siege wars, don't they? Check in once again. Over on that south side. Let's see exactly how that's going. Puppy poor. Walling in the wall. Walling in the... Uh... Yeah, here you go. Look at this. Like looking to make a little bit of headway down here. And players definitely stalling out at this point. I mean, Enetan tried for a kill, didn't find it. And I, I've got a sneaky suspicion. Oh my god. Oh, look at the resources Puppy's got. The only thing Puppy really needs at this point is production, right? Like you throw down all the production back here. Absolutely neck and neck and neck. Put down a magical little, a little wonderful thing over here. He's got lots of production. Oh, I say lots of production. How much production does he actually have? Let's, let's check. We go from Poppy Paw's perspective. Find a villager. 14 barracks, 11 archery rangers, 9 stables. So nowhere near enough production. He does have the 8, um, 8 siege workshops. So, I mean, you could, you could throw down the siege workshops back here. He's got plenty of resources in the bank, though. Like, you're talking, what, what is that? 30 or 300? 300, 300 janissaries? The equivalent of 300 janissaries? Probably need a bit more than that, though. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Where I'm going to be coming in and stopping this trade. He says, no more trade for you. Meanwhile, Anatan says, well, no more siege for you. Well, at least he was going to say it. And then he was like, psych. Psych. I want to check in on that king. Where's that king? Does he, does he know where the king... Oh, the king is open. Oh, the king is totally open. Oh, you could literally come through here right now. And the thing... Is he going to do it? I think he's going to do it. You got to make a run for it right now. Look, the, the whole... The gate is open. Gate's open. Come on in. Boom. You, th you thought I was going up here? You were wrong. Boom. King. Down to that south side. Urk pushing through. He's not sure where to go. He, he, he's, he started, he was like, Marine Lord? No. Okay. Uh, Anatan? No. Uh, back to Marine Lord? No. Uh, Poppy Port? No. He's still not sure where to go. The, the, the correct answer is Wham's base, though. That's the correct base. Anatan doesn't know there's a wall, though. Or doesn't know that there's no wall. That's exactly it. I, I think you, at this point, you kind of suspect that everybody's going to be wa walled in. But then you get players like Don Artie who, who just play an entire game and they're like, eh, walls. Pff, who needs them? Urk finally puts the king in. Puts him in somewhere safe. Protects him up a little bit. Marine Lord obviously still safe over on that backside. King in the middle of the map for Anatand. Who's in a position to throw wonders down? Puppy Paw? Marine Lord? Where do they go and how many vills are there? Honestly, if I'm a Marine Lord, you probably... Do you just delete... You can't really delete it there. You just got to pull Vils and go here, I think. E e economically, 161 for Puppy Paw. And th this is where it starts to really teeter on the edge because you've still got the potential. I mean, both of those guys, Puppy Paw and Marine Lord, are already point leaders, right? So if they win, it doesn't really change too much. I mean, it pushes Marine Lord up and it's going to push other people down. That's another thing to note. So if we were to take a look at, at the scoreboard once again... Marine Lord winning here would overtake Don Adi, would overtake Anatan as well. So it's quite important for him to actually pull out a victory here if he wants to get the extra money. If not, then, I mean, by all means, he can just he can just chill out. He can have a good day. But we remain locked in this fierce battle of loggerheads. Is that what they call it, loggerheads? Locked in loggerheads? Where they just kind of they don't push. And I guess realistically, hold on, how many points does Marine Lord get if he wins with this many people in the game? Hypothetically, if he went for it. 
Janissary numbers, are, uh, or rather, Skrulti numbers are quite good here. Spear's gonna help him out. But look at the amount of Sepahi. Man goes off the back line, gets some good solid damage in. He's completely surrounding the forces here. Enetan just gonna commit. Keep in mind, Enetan up to 66 vils now. I think he just, he's just getting rid of the Sepahi. He doesn't want them anymore. But that doesn't make sense. He doesn't have a lot of resources in the bank. So he manages to keep all of the units alive. If Marine Lord went for a wonder victory here. So Marine Lord's on... How many points was it? Nine points? So nine points here. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Wham, you are on the wrong side of the map, my friend. Was this... Was there... I guess there is something wrong with that gold. Not really anything wrong with this gold. He finally realizes... There's a lot going on on this map. It's understandable. So if he drops a wonder now... Yep, okay, there we go. Puppy Ford builds the wonder. Does Marine Lord throw one down immediately as well? Lots of vills here. I don't think you're going to beat up 49 vills. The, we, we just heard Puppy Ford deleting something else. Yeah, Marine Lord not going to stick it just yet. This makes a lot of sense because I, I think Marine Lord's in striking distance of Puppy Paw. And Puppy Paw may be aware of that. So, four, vil or four points for the win. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, plus the four wins, so eight points. Marine Lord's actually striking distance for a wonder victory here. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, the wonder is on the board. It is time. Oh, my Lord, it is time. This, I'm getting flashbacks to the Siege of Snooper right now. The one difference is that uh, Puppy Paw looks nowhere near as prepared for this wonder defense as Snooper did. For anybody who forgets the Siege of Snooper, it was an epic game from the first series of Outback Octagon. A 1v4 wonder. And I mean, realistically, what does Puppy Paw have to lose? He's sitting at, at point lead right now. He's got a great position in this game. It's 300 population against four players. And to be fair, not a lot of them have got a good way through. When it comes to getting across this river, the best way is going to be exactly transport ship. Transport ship with plenty of ills. I think that's going to be it. Well, it's 7 o'clock in Australia, and the reason I know is because my, my light behind me, I've got a timer on it. It automatically turns off at 7 o'clock. And uh, ideally, that is when I'm, oh, I am not awake. Or at least if I'm awake, I'm not in here. Well, it just turned off, so... You know, I, I, it's not... It's smart, but it's not that smart. Villager's going to be pulled forward. Tries to get on top of it. Is he going to look to siege? Yeah, he's looking to siege down. Not going to be able to find it. Anatan, big push coming through now. He wants that kill. Remember, the king is back here as well. Keep in mind, Puppy Paul is going to have to hold this for 15 minutes. First push comes out. And don't underestimate his power. One of the things I will draw your attention to is the power of critical mass. So if you've got 100 units versus 100 units, both of the players finish with... Well, normally it would be like one player finishes with about 20 units. But if you've got 200 units against 100 units, that first player is going to finish with like 170 units because they crush them so quickly. And that's what happens in this situation. Puppy Paw has got so many units, two up to 220 military right now, Compared to his enemies, who have got 134, 97, 84, 123. Which, if you add them all up together, seems like a lot. But the problem is, they don't all fight together. Alright, some high numbers starting to build here. 99 Janissaries. 37 Sabahis. Marine Lords Mage Touchdown. Villagers coming out. Throwing down the wooden fortress immediately. Puppy Paw going to be playing it out as we enter into the next hour of the Octagon. It's going to be careful not to lose these bombards. Expensive units. Anatan gets on top and surrounds them completely. Puppy Paw not paying attention still. One bombard down. Two bombards di going to go down. Three bombards go down. Four bombards go down. In the blink of an eye, losing more than a thousand resources there for Puppy Paw. At least I'm pretty sure it's a thousand resources. How much? Let's check. Ooh, 1350. That was like, what, 5,000 resources that just went down? And look at the run already coming through. 
Wham, trying to make it happen. Down to the south side. Under pressure. Uh, I, you know what? It's going to be hard to hold this. The fact that Marine Lord jumped over the river. I mean, that that's just something that you, you've got to suspect he'll do, but you don't expect him to do it that fast. And look at the production being thrown down by Marine Lord immediately. Big numbers. Big defense. 11 minutes to go, though. I mean, we're not talking three minutes to go right now. We're talking 11 minutes. That's a long time, ladies and gentlemen. You could potentially focus his houses. That could be a play. We can see it's happening now. He's down to 290. He rebuilds the house, though. He's throwing down production in the back of the base. And house is going to be thrown down with it. He's running out of space. You can already feel it. Unable to really commit or clean up any of these battles. Not really a mobile army. Not a lot of knights here. Bombard's teeing off on the back. Puppy paw. The grand final. Game number five. He tries to push that win even further. More Bombards coming out. He's down to 12k. 12k gold. 12k wood. 28k food still in the bank. The equivalent of 200 knights he can still make. Well, at least 200 knights from his food. Not from his gold. And he just spends all of his gold in the blink of an eye. Looks like he's going to be going into Sipahi here. Still holding on. Siege Workshop gets thrown down. Expect to see a Culverin or Six thrown up from here. Knights on the bottom. Puppy Paw. He's down to 300 or 241 out of 300 pop. He's losing production so quickly. We talked about this earlier. One of the things you need to do when you go for this one to victory is keep all of your production in this area. And it's all empty. Bit of a mistake if I do say. I mean, I'm talking to the FFA champion of the world right now who might become the two-time after this. Telling him how to play his game. Wham, regrouping. Reinforcements coming through. Plenty of production here. Irk yet to bring any villagers over to get, throw down more production, but... Oh my lord, he's so close. Oh my god, there, there's no way this, this stays up, right? Like, the, the Bombards... If, if the Bombards just get through to here, the Azua Moss can be targeted, right? I'm 99% sure. Even if they can't. Siege Workshop. Irk is building a wonder. Urk is building a wonder. Notre Dame coming down so many vills here as well. 57 villagers. Wham is building a wonder. Oh my god. Wham is building the Great Mosque. He cancels it though. Marine Lord, uh, your response please, sir. Uh, Marine Lord. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Uh, have you got any wonders for us today? It is the War of Wonders upon us right now. Wonder Wars. And Notre Dame comes up. And now you've got this awkward position where Urk is probably in the position to, cl to clean up the mosque himself. So he can't even use that and it gets deleted. Puppy Paw deletes it and he says, hey, just guys, just keep me alive. Urk actually backs away from it though. Very bold play by Urk. Where's that king? Where's that king? I, oh, he's safe. He's over here. Puppy Paw realizes... Death was imminent. Deletes the wonder and says, hey guys, you guys go after Urk instead. I'll delete it. I'll delete it. And immediately the turnaround happens. Marine Lord wasn't in position. I, I feel like at this point, Marine Lord with 66k food in the bank should just be removing all of his food bills and just putting them together, waiting to drop a wonder. You wait for someone else to do it. You race them. You beat them. Now they've got a wonder. You've got a wonder and you are ahead. King jumps back in the keep. Nobody really wants to commit to it. I mean, realist... Oh, God, that's still a massive army. He's still got 204 army after that. He deletes... That was a good timing on deleting that wonder. And I, I think he just knew, right? Like, I can't stick it. It's not going to work. I, I have miscalculated my position here. So I'm just going to delete it early rather than trying to starve it out, right? Because some players, I know myself included, I'd be like, okay, well, I've got 10 minutes to go, but maybe I win? I don't know. And it's like, you, you can't win. There was, it was just way too many units. But I guess the one thing to note for Urk is he's got a really defensive base. Like, a really defendable base. I'd, I'd just love... You know what I'd love to see? Like, a stone wall across here. Stone wall across here. 
j just this kind of stuff. The one thing... Oh, that water. That water. That water is like one drop away from being... Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a good little... This is a good screenshot right here. I, let me let me take a photo of this one right here. That one that one's going on the front cover. Wonder Wars, baby. That is that is a nice that's a nice little shot right there. But what happens when your enemy just drops a whole bunch of bombards? And you're like, hmm. Das ist gut, ja? It's not good though. And you're not German. And you're trying to work out why you speak why you're speaking like that. Still not walled off. I I I'm 99 percent sure you can get around this. He does have the grand oh he's got the Gallius there. Cool, that does some damage. Look at that. 172 damage on the Grand Ga on the Gallius? Dude, that's a lot of damage. That's more than a Bombard, isn't it? Let's find a Bombard. We've got a great Bombard. It's 228. We've got a Culverin. Got some Sipahi for you. Want some Sipahi? I don't even know if Anatan's got any Siege. All right, so Urk's Lama or Urk's Wonder has been up now for three minutes so far. He's done a good job to to take it by surprise. He's now on stone, so generating stone, which will be handy for him. Still got eleven hundred in the bank. But just remember, it's going to be hard defending this. O honestly, if I'm Urk, I would be going like a stone wall and then just a whole bunch of mangonels behind it. Mangonels, sprinkles, put some gates in, bring my vills back, and just keep rewalling. Yeah, yeah, I, I, this is what I like. I, I like this. You gotta be careful with these gates, though. Okay, they're all they're all facing the right way. He's got the Carrix in in the ocean, so there's no real chance that this is going to be. Uh, I don't think you're gonna drop from here. And you can see the stone walls coming up. I do like this from Urk. I think this is a pretty solid defensive position. Honestly, he's done well to close off his base. And look at the stone walls. Okay, Urk. All right, all right. I like it. Well, looks like Marine Lords brought some siege to the party. We got 11 minutes to go on this bad boy. He's begun, again, begun, again, uh, begun again. He is big. Be he's going to begin working down all the production here over on this east side. You can see Core in the chat right now asking, "What happened to Paul Puppy Paws Wonder? He deleted it. He tried to keep himself alive, and he managed to do it because Urk threw down the Wonder just a little bit too early. I think he managed to get the the Wonder down, but now, I mean, Puppy Paws still in the game." And it's one of those awkward things where you really you want to complete the wonder before Puppy Paw dies, but you also want to complete the wonder bef after Puppy Paw is dead. It's like it's this really awkward. Oh my god, great bomber! Oh my god, they like one shot. Ooh, ah, ooh, mm. I don't know how this is gonna go, guys. Uh, Carricks have got a range of nine. Bombards have got the range. Oh my! Oh, never mind. From the backside, all of the knights. Oh my god! Oh my! Oh my god! So many bombards. 12 great bombards. Taking a page out of beasties. Oh my lord. <laughs> Taking a page out of beasties book right now. All I can do is watch in awe as Urk gets sent back to the Shadow Realm. Not even sent back to the Shadow Realm, just gets sent to the Shadow Realm. That. Oh, 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 transport ship coming down the river. Not going to find it. And as I did correctly identify it, you can cross this point. So he needs to get some walls across here. Another transport ship. The Mangonels! The Mangonels from Wham take out the transport ship from Puppy Paw. The one way to cross the river. Great Bombards. I mean, he should be able with the Great Bombards here. You can see him bringing down... Does he go Trebs? Honestly, Trebs and then Treb down the docks before the transport ships get up. The thing is, there's going to be more transport ships coming down the river. Oh, the stone ball's not to the edge. There's the next transport ship. Yeah, Puppy Paw are going to be able to close this one out. Very quickly. Needs to wait on all of the infrastructure here. Wham and Urk are teaming up. Really? I guess... I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Urk seems pretty intent here. Bombards to the north as well. Anatan looking to push down. Oh my lord. Oh god. Oh, and look at the health. Look at the health on the transport ship. <laughs> Not today, my friend. Uh, 
I'm glad he only put five in there. He could have put 16 in there. Oof. Uh, that was an expensive uh, experiment. Um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> awkward. Very, very awkward. Not a good time to be a transport ship and an even worse time to be a Great Bombard. That was five Great Bombards that immediately uh, just, just died. Triple threat coming down here. Who's going to be next? Who wants to go for the one to next? Wham. Come on. Step up to the plate, son. Now is the time. If there's ever been a time to build a wonder, it's not right now. It's probably like maybe... See, the thing is, you need to get verification on this. And, and all of the other players are playing without vision, right? Like, they're communicating to each other. You can see them in the chat right now, typing to each other. Actually, so something interesting right now that our admins just said. He said that Puppy Paw technically could defend Urk, since Urk winning actually gives Puppy Paw first place. That's a, that, that's a good call. I mean... Whether he does that or- Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, he, he popped them all out though. But isn't that teaming? No, I don't think that's teaming. Uh, that, that, if, if, I mean, d there's defending Urk and then there's attacking other people with Urk. And I think that those are two different things. Alright, Marine Lord pushing in on this east side. Just remember, he is still in striking distance. We've got five players in the game. Which means that if Marine Lord pulls... Oh my... Oh my god, that king! Phew, you were way too close to com for comfort, my friend. Alright, well... Marine Lord obviously cleared for takeoff. The closest on striking distance to, to Puppy Paw. I like this single warrior monk with a, a relic in the bag, just pumping it out. All right, here we go. You can see how much trouble he's having, Puppy Paw, in taking this off Urk. Five minutes and 40 seconds on the Notre Dame. A lot of villagers here. You can't really throw up a stone wall here either, because if you do, the bombards will be able to shoot it. More transport ships coming out. Okay, now it's looking a little bit more... A little bit stronger. Marine Lord's through, though. He's through on the top side. Urk in trouble. He's going to throw down a couple of houses in the back. Urk down to 140 population max. He's got six mangoes here. Lack of stone walls. 760 stone in the bank. Could look to pull it out. Rams are going to go down. There's mangoes. Watch the mangoes. And now the drop comes in. It's a little bit further upstream. He's pulling everything across. They're intent on taking him out. Are we just taking turns of, of who, who puts down a wonder and who doesn't? And eventually we're going to grind something out. Puppy Paul looking to dive at Randy Orton on the back line. Yet to fire off. There we go. We see him fire. Manganel's teeing off. Should be able to hold a little bit longer. Boiling oil helping out plenty. Bombard's in the back. Four minutes to go. I don't like your... Ch oh, I don't like your chances at all. They're just going in one by one. They, they, they know that if they go in together, they're going to crush each other's army. Wham is building a wonder. Wham, it's your turn. Does Marine Lord throw one down as well? If I'm Marine Lord right now, I want to throw down that wonder. You got to throw down that wonder. And it looks like Notre Dame... We'll be coming down. Where's the king? King behind Notre Dame right now. They could just look to focus the king, pick up those extra little points. King now going to be looking to jump into the keep. And with that, Urk almost seems certain to be going the way of the Dodo here. Three minutes and 44 seconds is a long time to hold when you've got this many units standing outside Notre Dame. Urk can delete this wonder, but with them so close, so close here to killing the wonder, you would, you would almost have to guarantee the fact that they would just look to try and take him out. And Notre Dame goes down. 
Erx Wonder is destroyed. The Bombards now come through. The Carrick's also going to be looking to fire down. King is out. Bombard's going to be chasing him down. Does he have the ability to use the movement speed? He's got nine and a half thousand resources in the bank. Comes around the back. Oh, King. Oh, King. I don't know about this one, buddy. You are quite literally between a rock and a hard place. He's getting sieged down. The great Bombards needs to get their shots off. Are they going to connect? They connect and it's a conversion. Puppy Paw takes out another player. And that is going to guarantee him first place. There is no way Marine Lord can catch him. That is it. Even with a wonder victory. Had the wonder gone up just even, even 10 seconds ago, it would have been a different story. But now Puppy, with an additional 50 population, puts himself well and truly in the lead in this game. Not to mention the point advantage that he's got. That will guarantee that Puppy Paw is way too far ahead. No one will catch him. He will be the two-time champion of Outback Octagon. Meanwhile, traitors of Wham getting caught. Wham now taking his turn. We we are everybody is just taking a turn in in going for a wonder victory. Apparently he didn't get the... Are you serious? He didn't get the kill? Oh, he, he got the kill on the king, but he didn't get the population for killing the king because the Bombard died as the king died. The, the Bombard gets its shot off. It's in the air. Bombard dies. Brr, king died. You love it. You love it. Thank you, game. Let's take a look at Puppy Paw's base. You can see right now Puppy Paw's got 34 houses. And yet sits at 300 population. Ah, you gotta love games, don't you? Classic bug right there. It doesn't. It doesn't track the owner of the tr of the uh, of the projectile, I guess. Or if it does, it doesn't have an attribute for the owner of the projectile. This is a triple A game. I do. I do assure you guys. Big army now starting to build up for Puppy Paw. It'd be even bigger if it weren't for um, <clears throat> certain engine issues. And yes, for anybody wondering, he, he still gets points. Yes. we Just because the game does bugs out doesn't mean that we bug out as well. We could bug out, but we don't. I just realized there's toll outposts here. Has he got them? Yeah, he does. One. I just see the one toll outpost. He's not even... Oh man, he's only got two toll outposts. He's not even using them. Come on, Wham. Dude, look at the resources Marine Lord's... Oh my god. Marine Lord. Bro. We gotta talk about your... He is living life frugally, right? Like, this is this is your classic... Reddit Australia finance user. Driving the Toyota Camry. Saving money for days. Never spending it. I, actually, I've just been told by the admin. Head admin has just t notified me. Technically, Anatand can still catch Puppy Paw. So, I, I did say that he'd be the two-time. That's not the case. Anatan is still in it. I mean, I don't really like his position, but he is te still technically in it. Big mango shots over the wall. So keep in mind, let's let's take a little bit of a look at the points at the moment, just to get an idea. So 13 points for Anatan. Yeah, Puppy Paw on 16, but remember, Puppy Paw's got, what, three kills this game? So he's up to 18, which means that Anatan would need five points. But with a wonder victory right now, technically, uh, he could... He could... He could actually get the... Uh, he could still snatch away the win. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be going for a wonder victory anytime soon, though. All right, Maganel shots. Puppy's 20 points. He got the first kill. No, he didn't. Donati did. Come 
Calvin. He's going to be careful. So many Magadels in here. Needs to avoid getting surrounded. You can see it's happening from both sides. Look at the meat grinder. Oh my god, Anatan's just lost everything. It's the second time in the game we've seen Anatan appear to delete units. He hasn't deleted them, but it appears that he has. Not respecting the mangoes. You dive in, even with your cavalry, and you just get grinded. Mangonel numbers really starting to rise. How many mangoes are we talking here? 11 mangoes. Four culverin. Four! That is a huge army. Puppy boy with 234 military pop. That's 189. I guess technically you can add a couple more pop with the, the Great Bombard. How much pop are the Great Bombards, by the way? Can we check the Siege Workshop? If I can find one, I'll tell you. I can't find one, though. I guess we'll just have to watch the battle. I think that they're 5 pop. I'm not 100% sure, though. Big trade coming up right now. And now Manganel's moving in on that top side. He can't break through the wall. He needs to just take down these walls. He can't just focus right here. It brings Instead, the Bombard's going to go forward. Eight minutes left. On the one to victory for Wham. Puppy Paul's got to be careful to enter this gap in the wall. And now... The triple threat. He's being teamed from all three sides. Under significant pressure. Villagers getting pulled. Springles from the back line, taking out the mangoes. Donzo's getting cleaned up. He's got him in one big group. Bombards from every single side. Looks like Wham. Maybe saying Bam. Maybe saying thank you, ma'am, very shortly. Loses absolutely everything. He's down to 120 population. I don't think Puppy Paul lost a single unit there. Needs to bring the Bombards up. All right, is this where Marine Lord throws down the Wonder? Maybe not yet. He's got to wait a little bit longer. Still quite a ways to go. It's a big base. Wham with a big base. Wham, try to distract. He's like, bring back your Bombards, friend. I am, I am, I am raiding you with a Donzo. Please bring back your Bombards. Do not attack me. Come and clear this raid. It's not going to happen. Not today. King out of water. Where's he trying to go? Why do I keep... I just heard someone say something in Chinese. Zhongguo. <laughs> what? There's no Chinese... There's no one even close to Chinese in this game. Puppy Paul continues to move forward. Marine Lord just... Sieging down buildings, and you gotta be careful here. These two are fighting against each other. Hold on. Hold on. Is it a classic case of, hey, I can get the kill here alone? I don't need you. Oh my god. Oh god, the pain. I, I think it's it's a classic case of, I don't need your help. Get out of here. Oh my lord. I can do it myself. Okay. Go for it then. Puppy Paws trying to climb back up on the resource count as well. He's got enough food for it. Almost enough wood. Not enough gold, not enough stone. So no real chance of it, to be honest. But the gold's coming back up. He's up to 119 gold. Attacked in the middle. The Donzo, the single Donzo from Wham. Still attempting to distract. Fuck you in particular. <laughs> they, they literally turn around 360 no scope that bitch. <laughs> poor, poor thing. Oh man. The reinforcements are not terrible for Wham right now. Like he's bringing them back. The top side, Anatan. Looking to push in, trying to distract somewhat. You can see Wham taking the bait. Numbers not looking the best though for Wham. He's on 23 villagers, 91 military pop. Four minutes and 50 seconds to go. And look at him clearing this out. He, he, does he want the kill for himself? Is that what, is that what he's doing? 
it could be the case that he that he's he just wants the kill for himself and he's that confident with his army that he can take it and he's just looking to further cement his lead to show his dominance in these free-for-all games we've seen it time and time again week one puppy poor victory it was incredible watching those tasmanian snipes we've seen plenty of snipes this game as well big damage coming out Marine Lord looking to come up the rear. Bringing the Rams. The Streltsy. The Spears. Stuck between two Ottoman players. And you can see Puppy Paul's very hesitant about committing too much here. Burns down the market. So no trade for you, at least not for the moment. Stonewall gets deleted. King on the run. He's got the transport ships ready to go. It's going to bring him over to the other side. All of the attention is going to be on that wonder. And the Rams are through. The Rams are through. And a 10. We'll look to siege down the Great Mosque. There's nothing here to stop it. The other players should be able to see this and react accordingly. Now, Marine Lord, the last man standing. How many wonders have we seen this game? Wonder number one. Wonder number two. Wonder number three. Wonder number four. Will we see a fifth wonder in what will be known as the Wonder Wars? Three minutes until Wonder Defeat. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to tell you that there's not three minutes until Wonder Defeat. There is a little bit over 15 minutes until Wonder Defeat because surely Marine Lord is going to drop it down low and go, go, go. Go on, Marine Lord. Hit him with it. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Marine Lord. Your response, please. Marine Lord, your response, please. And I know you guys are like freaking out about the king. Don't worry about the king. He's in a transport ship. He, he's going to be alive for another 16 minutes. What? What is going on here? Wham, what are you doing? Uh, can you guys blur the screen? Can we, we need to blur the screen, please. Don't let them see. Don't let them see. King is out. King is out. King's on the run. I think he knows he can't. Oh. Mm. Ugh. Bombards. 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 Too long to unpack. We'll take a sofa warrior. Why not? King. Now. Just chilling out. A couple of spearmen going to be able to spot him. I like that he's just... He, he's coming back to visit the place that he grew up in. It's that classic case of the, of the king... Returning to his homelands. It's like, look what they did. I used to eat salad here every Tuesday. My father would ride me into town on a stallion. Actually, he's Malian. I mean, if he's Malian. Oh, 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 that's not good. Marine Lord. Marine Lord doing a little bit of a loop to loop here. Genesaries. Marine Lord picks up the kill, though. Wham, assassinated. Marine Lord is building a wonder. The Cathedral of the Great Tsar. Of the Tsar. Okay, Marine Lord going for a wonder here. Hold on. Let's let's double check the, the points. Marine Lord on nine points right now. And with that, it will take him up to 10. Don Adi, he picked up the... Was it the first blood kill, Don Adi? So he's up to, I think, was it 13 points? I'd, I'll have to double check. Maybe I'm going crazy here. But this, this is probably enough. This is definitely enough to make him leapfrog Don Adi. Can Marine Lord overtake Anatan? Anatan's on 13 points. He hasn't got to kill this game, if I remember correctly. So he would overtake Anatan as well. So Mar Marine Lord would go from fourth position currently to second position. I don't... Th there, there is no world in which he challenges Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw is way too far ahead, I think, at this point. Unless... I mean, even at this point... If Marine Lord... Yeah, I, it, no, it's not possible. All right. All well, the hierarchy is slowly starting to build. Puppy Paw has managed to make his way back up to 146 villagers in this game. When it comes to town centers, actually, is it 146 villagers or is it 146 traders? He's got 86 active traders. That's a that is a lot of trade. Them's a lot of trading words. 
Marine Lord now going to be looking to defend this. They're, they're just taking turns at this point. Who's next? Anatan, you, you want to go next? Oh, you can't really afford it. All right, Puppy Paw, you're up for round two after this one. Um, if, uh, if Marine Lord can't hold Puppy Paw, we nominate you to be the wonder carrier for this game. Now, keep in mind, Puppy Paw still doesn't have that 50 population that he should technically be getting. And it's starting to make a difference right now. It's starting to make a bit of a dent in his game. Because he could be sitting on an extra 50 traders. He could be sitting on an extra 50 sepahi. It's an extra 50 something that he's missing out on. But is there a world where we see a sacred site victory? A sacred undercut? Potentially. It's a lot of dead sheep right here. New Zealanders are so sad right now. They're looking at this like, Oh no. Why, why did they have to do it to the sheep? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's let's move on. But yeah, I mean, 50 traders that you're missing out on is, is quite a bit. You're talking about... I mean, the amount of gold these guys are bringing in. He's missing out on a fair bit of GPM. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I should stop, I should stop. Has he just got a free run into it? I mean, realistically, he could probably just run part. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a... That's a bit of a gauntlet right there. We've seen these Rus keeps before, haven't we? How do you even get around that? Marine Lord going... Where did Marine Lord get all this stone from? Horseman, Spears, solid defense at the moment for Marine Lord. He's up to 250 pop. 12 minutes to go. On the wonder. Oh, hey, where'd you come from? How'd you get up there? Spaskaya Tower, we're going to be shutting you down. Trying to get a little bit of a little bit of vision back here. Marine Lord currently sits on 131,000 resources. 131,000, that's correct. You heard that right. Marine Lord has been hoarding the entire game. But is it going to matter? Because Puppy Paw is going to look to undercut him. He says, mate, I don't want you winning. I don't, I don't care. I don't want to, I don't want you to win. I want to win. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter if I come first or not. All that matters is whether I win. And Puppy paw has got that extra pop. Now granted, he's still missing out on that 50. Remember we talked about that earlier. 50 Sipahi, 50 Spears, 50 Traders. Oh, here we go. How much? There you go. He's missing out on 12 Great Bombards. Throws down additional keeps. So, now going to be looking to undercut Marine Lord. So, by about a minute. Now, here's what they don't tell you in school. You can actually delay a sacred victory. Every second that you stand on the sacred site, where the enemy is also standing on the sacred site, you delay it. If you were the first to stand on the sacred site. If you were not the first to stand on the sacred site, and the enemy was the first one to stand on the sacred site, like, as you can see right now with Puppy Paw, how he's standing on the sacred site, as long as he is on that sacred site physically, then it keeps ticking. So there is a world where Marine Lord doesn't actually have to neutralize the sacred site, but rather delay it. So as an example, all these horsemen, if they were to come out and stand on this sacred site, start neutralizing it, that's going to freeze the timer. Might freeze it at, say, 8 minutes and 30 seconds. The Marine Lords keeps ticking down. If he's able to freeze it for 90 seconds, 95 seconds, he then undercuts the Sacred Timer. So it's um, something that we need to watch out for. Now continuing to push down. Actually, now, now that I think about it, with Marine Lord picking up a kill there, that means that he's going to be tied up with... Oh, no, he's not tied up with Don Hardy. Don Hardy's on 13 points. Never mind. All right, center of the map, Puppy Paw. Now, undercutting with the victory condition. Anatan's stuck between a rock and a hard place here as he decides, do I go for the wonder? Do I go for the sacred site? What do I do? I don't really want to contest this sacred site. There's a lot of units near it. It's pretty close to my base. That's where he's, he's going to be camping there for sure. Other sacred site. Ah, it's too far away. I'm not interested in that one. But Marine Lord says he's interested in it. And there's a lot of units here for Marine Lord. I think this is just going to be a neutralized sacred site. He can just stand on it all day. 
Yep, he just camps it. Holds position. And now that he's on the sacred site, even if Puppy Paw comes in and stands on it, you can see that it's holding. 748. So even if Puppy Paw comes in and stands on it now, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter. He's still losing out this time. But he's not losing the sacred site. That's the, that's the one thing to note. He's not losing the sacred site. So we're slowly ticking towards it. You can see eight, 748. Spear's now going to come out. Hold, hold your horses. Hold your horses. He's still holding the site. Okay. All right. Needs to get that undercut through. Just remember, he doesn't need to neutralize the site. He just needs to get underneath it. More horsemen now coming in from the top side. There was a rewall attempt that's going to come through. As long as he keeps the units on the sacred site, doesn't matter if they're the same units. They can be different units. They just got to maintain a presence on the sacred site. 748. Eight minutes and five seconds. Spearman numbers starting to build here. He needs to get it down. Battering Ram going to be coming onto the sacred site. Doesn't need, doesn't want to step off the sacred site. And now we see the Battering Ram onto the sacred site. Second rib. Oh my lord, look at all the units coming down. Marine Lord's about to undercut him. He's going to undercut him. And that's it. That's it. Marine Lord now going to be victorious with the wonder. He's, he's paused it enough to survive. And that's it. Marine Lord falls back. He says, thank you. Thank you. I've done my work here. The power of the undercut. Marine Lord, he doesn't need to neutralize your sacred site. He just needs to stand on it and make you a little bit upset about it. And now Puppy Paw immediately says, oh yeah, you made me upset, boy. You're going to get it. Marine Lord sitting at the moment 92k, 112k, 113k, I guess we could say. Resources in the bank. Very well played by Marine Lord there. Manages to bring that sacred victory out from contention. The consequence of not getting those walls up completely. Even just the base... Oh, I mean, you're never going to get them up, right? Like, I don't even think it's possible. How do you connect the dots? All right. Here we go. Gauntlet is going to be run. Doesn't have the emplacements through, but does have the boiling oil. Remember that. Big army from Marine Lord. 13 villagers remaining. Under pressure on the top side. Plenty of battering rams out here. 26 of the world's finest. Big army from Anatan. He's looking for blood. Remember, he needs to pick up a kill here. If he does it, he's ahead of Don. Don Hardy really under threat in this game. Poor Don. Bombard's continuing to push through. These guys will clear out. Uh, how, many, how many shots does it take from a great Bombard to kill a keep? Uh, one. There you go. One round. Uh, let, let's test it again, though. Uh, no, yeah, one. Yeah, one. Sprinkled numbers. Oh, my God. Look at the sprinkles. 18 sprinkles here for the madman. If he's able to clear out the great Bombards on the back, it's going to change the way this game plays. It's going to mean that Marine Lord is in with a real fighting chance. Manganel's teeing off on the back. He's got so much siege. Streltsy getting cut down quickly. Springles firing down on the Great Bombards. He's down to five Great Bombards. Look at the Springled numbers here. Enatan, meanwhile, is just chilling back. Puppy Paw is losing it all. They're not fighting at the same time. Enatan could be pushing him. I think that might be it. Marine Lord... With five minutes to go. We don't hear a gong for five minutes, but I tell you what, we might as well. I'll do it for you. Gong, gong, gong. That's your five minute warning right there. Marine Lord looking to try and defend it. The main issue that he has is that he didn't take out all of the great bombards. So these guys are still a persistent threat. And it's one of those things where you can't ignore them. Oh God, that's a massive army. Huge army now coming through. Boiling oil. Cannon emplacements. Oh, he didn't... St he didn't... He didn't stonewall it. He didn't stonewall it. He's got the w resources. Just delete... It's too late. Oh, no, Marine Lord. Oh, no, Marine Lord. He didn't stonewall. It's just too little too late. And I'm too wrong. And I can't wait. Villagers. Does he pull Vils? He's trying to siege it down. 
Oh no. Oh, never mind. Is he gonna get it? Oh, it's gonna be close. Under 2,000 health now. 1,500. Oh, they're getting melted. It's on fire. Where are the villagers here? The wonder's on fire. The Cathedral of the Tsar. 850 health. Marine Lord with 13 villagers remaining. Calling all villagers to aisle 16. We have got a code red. I repeat, a code red. The Cathedral of the Tsar is on fire. And a single villager joins the front. He's like, oh, hello, sir. Welcome back. Uh, please. Please bring me some water. And he's just, he's tapping there. He's repairing. Marine Lord lives to see another day. Two hundred and twenty-one military population for Marine Lord continues to rise. He's up to two twenty-nine. Elite King stays alive. Probably needs to jump in into that. You can see that Anatan somehow managed to live throughout this game. He's preparing for the late game. Just throwing down a couple of. There we go. There's the gongs. Gong number one. And we finally see the stone walls coming in here for Marine Lord. You know, here I am singing JoJo's hit single from 2004. When in reality, I should be singing Venga Boys, baby. Boom, 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 boom. Marine Lord loves to boom. I don't, I don't know what the rest of the lyrics would be, but we can work that out. All right. Three minutes until sacred victory. We got, we got double gongs, baby. We got the double gongs. King is out. He actually moves the king somewhere safer. He he believes, he's of the opinion that the king is safer back here. Probably the right call. More villagers coming through to build, build these walls. Marine Lord holding on for dear life right now. Big mango shots. Big mango shots on the defense. Two minutes until one to defeat. Up against two Ottoman players right now. Marine Lord, the champion. Holding on for dear life. Rumors say his bounty is plentiful in this game. I have my suspicions. I'd be surprised if it's any more than 80. Big mango shots. The walls are complete. You're not finding any way in here. Oh, but the Cathedral of the Star is still really low health. Repairs now coming through. Marine Lord, he's under significant pressure. Big mangoes on the back. Great Bombard slowly working their way through. A minute and 18 seconds for Marine Lord. If it goes down, Puppy Paw is guaranteed to win. Remember that. If it, if the landmark goes down, Puppy Paw just wins the game. He's got to be careful though. The Sprinkle numbers are significant. He's managing to take out Bombards from both sides. One minute until Sacred... Or rather, until one to defeat. He's, they've got to go right now. But look at the numbers for Marine Lord. 221 military pop still. The Springles are incredible here. He's got so many Springles. Look at the numbers. Double digits still throughout this game. I don't think there's any way they take him out. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. He will be your victor in game five this evening. One minute until sacred victory and puppy poor. It's not going to matter, my friend. You've been undercut. You've thrown up some stone walls. Cute little stone walls. Uh, but unfortunately for you today, that is going to be it. Puppy Paw coming in, marching in with a single Great Bombard. Looking to try and take this out with 12 seconds to go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to tell you that while he won't be your rank one or your place one or your first place, your gold medalist, he will be your victor in this game five. And that's going to push him up the leaderboard. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Lord victorious with the wonder. And of course, on the Rus, playing. And winning, you know that means only one thing. Free fucking scouts, and I get 80 bounty. 80? You shoved my arm at the start of the game. 80 bounty, I was like, I Okay, okay, we can't, we can't do the whole thing. I don't want to get DMCA just yet, you know. Uh, that's, uh, we'll save that for another day. All right, let's talk about numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Who is your winner tonight? Who is your second place? Who is your third place? We are about to find out as we do it live. I'm going to show you how it's done here, over, live. This is it. We, uh, we, we just we just put the numbers in here. All right, so I have got my admin on standby. He is chilling out in the back seat. He's going to be passing through the numbers to me right now. Let's take a look and see. 
All right, we, we've got it on the way. All right, here are the numbers. Three points for Don Artisan. Donald Artisan, as he's known by his close friends. The Don Artie, the Big Don, Donald Anthony Art Artisan. Uh, and then we've got three points coming in for Puppy Paw. Uh, wait, hold on. That's that's the wrong number. This number here. 13. Puppy Paw. Three points for him. He's going to go up to 19. And Marine Lord, drum roll please, with seven points. Take second place. Don Artie will be your tie break third place champion. And Atan will be fourth. That is it, ladies and... Wrong scene. Oh my God. Oh, you, got, uh, you guys are getting... Oh, that's terrible. Keck, keck W. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, there, there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, uh, uh, do, do we just go... Do we go back and do we do it again? No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys know what's happening. It's three points here for Puppy Boy. He goes up to 19. Seven points for Marine Lord. He goes up to 16. Don Artie, 13 points. He manages to snag away third place. But Marine Lord manages somehow to get away on second place. So that's going to be it. Now, for anybody wondering, Don Artie, why is he third place? Why is Anatan not third place? So in the handbook, we have specific tiebreakers uh, that occur based on if, if there is a, a tie between players coming into the top 16 or going into the top eight, or in this case, you know, being determined who, who is first, who is second, who is third. Uh, the way that it works is this. Uh, you have depending on your victories. So number one is going to be your wonder victory. Number two is going to be your sacred victory. And then number three, it's going to be just normal victories. And then it keeps going down and going down. Don Artie has got two victories in the tournament where wonder victory happened. That was one in week three, and that was one today. Uh, Anatan has one wonder victory and one sacred victory, which means that Don Artie has the tiebreak advantage and will get third place here which means that it's now time to crown our victor and bring in the prize pool. Let's take a look and see exactly how much they're going to be awarded. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. Uh, let me just, uh, do we just pull this up? Hold on. All right. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, my documents, content creation, Outback Octagon, handbook, handbook 1.4. Let's have a look and see how much we've got for them. All right. The first place, $2,500 dues going over to Puppy Paw. Second place, $2,000 going over to Marine Lord. Very well played by the big Marine Lord himself. $1,500, third place, going to be going over to the Beast. Well, I was going to say the Beast from the East, but it's actually Don Arty. It's actually Don Arty. Uh, fourth place. Actually, it's it's fourth until eighth. So fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth all get a thousand dollars. So Anatan a thousand dollars, Beastie a thousand dollars, Irk a thousand dollars, Puppy Paw. No, never mind. He's he, we've already counted him. Salami and Wham all one thousand dollars. But Puppy Paw is going to be your two-time champion, ladies and gentlemen. The two-time. That is it. He won the first Outback Octagon. He won the second Outback Octagon. And of course, we've got the last the last money to give away. It is going to be the five special categories. We've got best sacred site defense, best wonder defense, best king snipe, best clutch moment. And this one got changed. It's no longer best comeback. It is now instead the funniest moment. And that means we've got a whole bunch of or a whole bunch more that is going to be going over to those players as well. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to cast this Outback Octagon for you guys. Before we close out, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who helped make this possible. Uh, who am I looking at? I'm looking at big, big dogs out there like Lord Petito, our head admin. I'm looking at Mr. Merlin uh, behind the scenes. He does so much work. Honestly, Mr. Merlin, massive shout out to you, buddy. Uh, you are, you're, you're incredible and I'm so lucky to have you. So huge shout out to you. Uh, of course, we've also got the technical people behind the scenes, uh, our overlay designer. So that's going to be Koosh. He is incredible. We're, we're very lucky to have him. Uh, he, he is wonderful. Woproc who managed to put all of these these mods together and kept it updated throughout the, the event. So huge shout out to him. Uh, and then, of course, Biddlin, uh, making just some incredible maps for us. Another huge thank you uh, for Biddlin. Uh, so hopefully I've managed to, to get everybody. 
Um, I'd, ha I'd have to double check uh, my, my DMs and make sure I got everybody. Um, but, uh, and I can see a whole bunch of people asking for an, an interview with Puppy Paw. I don't think uh, we'll be able to do a Puppy Paw uh, interview at the moment. We didn't, we didn't contact him uh, earlier, but I can tell you right now, Puppy Paw is going to be a happy man. Uh, we can say that much. Don't forget your sponsor. Oh, that's right. Yes, of course. If you're interested in uh, in checking out Patreon, uh, then uh, there you go. Uh, that that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed Outback Octagon Two. I enjoyed it. I thought the games were absolutely amazing. Much better than Outback Octagon One. I'm looking forward to Outback Octagon Three. I hope you are as well. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.